<laughs> I was like, where's the little red button? All right. Most, when it comes to goals, today, I don't know where this is going to go, but this is where I'm feeling it's going to go. <laughs> Mo, let's think about our goals. Okay. Most traders, even me, you know, start started with trading, started out trading because we didn't necessarily have a passion for the markets then and there, but we wanted to work for ourselves. We wanted money. We wanted freedom. We wanted time. Okay. Now, when someone is completely new to trading and without, without having any experience, what type of goal do you think someone's going to have? Drop it in the chat. What type of goal would someone have? Or even what type of goal do you have? Drop it in the chat. What is your goal with trading? What is your goal with trading? Happiness. Mm. Fuck you for going first though. <laughs> Guys, what do you want from trading? Drop it in the chat. Freedom. 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 Freedom from what? Because the admittance of freedom is then slavery to something. Being a slave to the system, mental freedom, time freedom, financial freedom, economic freedom. My goal is to be able to earn an income, to have financial freedom for my family. This is good. We're getting such a mixed bag of exactly what I want to talk about. Right? So before anyone starts learning to trade, right, most people and this would probably be everyone because most of you have actually been here a really long time. When you first start learn or heard about this, am I right or am I right or am I right when I say that money was the thing that allured you that lured you in? Hundred percent. Yeah. Now you know better. It's other things, and that really plays into what I want to talk about. When you say money, when you say Anything like, let me just scroll up in the chat. Not sell my time, financial freedom, economic freedom, financial freedom, right? What do you think? What type of goal do you think that is? That is what we call an outcome goal, right? So when you say, I want to make $5,000 a month, or I want to make $250 a day trading, or I want to be funded. Okay. Also shout out to Sam Bonello. We have another funded trader in Trade House Oz as of today. Gang, Yay. gang. Yes. Shout out. Huh? So fucking sick. Oh yeah, back on track. But funded is is a is a very popular goal. Okay. But as time goes on and you get experience, you can also now agree because of some of you, some of your answers, you can also see that those goals of being funded, you know, hundred grand a year, five thousand dollars a month, whatever, those type of goals actually mean nothing in your trading right? Those types of goals will not help you improve as a trader, right? They will not help you become a better trader, right? And in fact, goals like that will actually only hurt your trading progress and your development as a trader, okay? Because exactly, trades- because how is that any different? Yeah. Hasn't exactly. it always been financial, you know, independence before even trading? That's a great point, SJ. What has yeah. changed? Yeah. Yeah. So in, in instead of the goal helping you, it's actually going to deviate you from focusing on what, guys? I say it all the time. Where should our focus be? Process. Exactly right. So when you have goals that are time freedom, financial freedom, funded $5,000 a month, $10,000 a month, instead of those goals helping you, they're going to deviate you from focusing on the process and of your rules, which are the most important thing in this, okay? So when it comes to you achieving your trading goals, you actually need a paradigm shift. You need to shift your perspective because most traders are setting external goals, everything to do with profits, incomes, even risk to reward, right? Win percentages, okay? But but never they never ask what psychological changes need to be in place in our core beliefs in order for you to actually become funded, achieve the hundred grand a year, achieve financial freedom, right? So instead of asking the harder question is what 
what is it about you that needs to change in order for you to achieve that goal? Right? Most people never actually see themselves as the weak link. And this is a tragic fucking flaw. <laughs> okay? It's a tragic flaw because what happens is we're we're just looking for the special the the you know the the special we seek the secret sauce right we're looking for the quick fix to solve all the problems that can get us there oh it must be this strategy oh it must be scalping oh it must be this right and what happens is you believe that with that solution you can now that you've got something else you can now go back on track to achieving the goals that you've set for yourself but what what do you what what you're actually doing is you're neglecting the difference between outcome goals and performance goals. Yeah, might go. Well, I didn't mean to cut you off in the middle of your thought, but oh. if yeah, you want to fix it. that. Uh, huh? I'll, I'll say a bit more and then, but yeah. you can talk. Now yeah, I didn't fine. mean to cut you off. I just will definitely want to add on to this point. Go now. That's so fine. Okay. Well, <clears throat> the distinction that I wanted to make and how you framed it is perfect because especially if it is, and, and just like how SJ was saying that it's not meant to be comfortable, this is one of those things. Financial independence is wrong because in, when it, in context of trading. Because when that expectation does not happen in whatever preset time frame, three months, six months, a year, then the expectation versus what actually happens then creates doubt and confusion and anger and frustration and this. And then you start dealing with a bunch of other things. But again, it brings me back to the initial point that how is that any different? If anything, it is the fallacy of the grass being greener. Why do people go to college or why have we done anything that we have done? All of us as human is, you know, adults, everything that we have done has been in the pursuit of financial freedom, right or wrong. So that's why when I said that, how is this in particular any different? And my imposition is that it's not. And so this paradigm shift that SJ is referring to, and as she will add, you know, add, continue to add on to it, is exactly that. Everybody is chasing money, guys. Everybody is literally, fine. they want financial you know, freedom, right? Can you even think of one person that you know that isn't doing that exact same thing? Even if they're not trading and just maybe have a job or going to school or a career, or whatever, it's for the same exact purpose. So my point is, is that paradigm shift and the way that I always like to frame it specifically in trading is that it is 100%, this is 100% performance-based pay. Uh -huh. And what is the biggest shift in my opinion is again, stopping that pursuit of all I'm doing this for is money, because if there is a consistent discipline plan, remember, guys, that Bruce Lee quote, not 10, one thing, 10,000 or uh, 10,000 different things one time. It's one thing 10,000 times. And if you can think about at any other point in your life, where have you done that? Because, again, in context of trading, what is done to make five dollars is also the same exact thing that is done to make 50 or 500 or 5,000. It's not an income claim. I'm saying that's literally how trading works. Where else has that ever been the situation or the circumstance? Because again, the only thing that is changing or in at least uh, in this particular way is the lot size. That's it. So it is no longer a question of trying to seek out financial independence because if we need to set in that framework that you have found a metaphorical vehicle that can get you there. What I just said of what can, do, what can be done to make $5 is what can be done to make 50 and, and so on and so on. That's not, that's not a, a dream. That is literally what all of us have here. So it is no longer a question of seeking financial independence. Now we have a path. You see what I'm saying, guys? Now there is a clear distinction of 
how do I now get there? It is no longer searching for it. You have found the path. And so how is that path walked? It is, again, reframing our approach, our beliefs, everything that SJ was just talking about. Because who else do you know that is doing that, guys? Who is, who, who is doing what I, you know, what, what I was just saying? And it's not just anybody like in, in here or in the trade-offs or anything, just in general. That is why that Bruce Lee quote even exists, because everybody looks for the grass to be greener anywhere else. SJ started, you know, dinging on it, scalping and then day trading and then gold or Euro USD and this and this and this and this and this and this. It is the same literal function that we have always done at any other stage in our lives, guys, at anything. And so that reframing, again, is just about looking at, <clears throat> first of all, what we all have here, but how that path can be walked is not uh, exciting. Everybody wants to flip money, right? I have $100 in my account. How do I turn it into 500? And then once I have that, how do I turn that into a thousand and then a thousand to whatever, blah, blah, blah. That's what like selling drugs is for. Flipping money is not what trading should be about. But the trap is, is that it is possible by definition. That's why you can just throw money at the wall in the markets and you could turn $100 into $1,000. That is a deliberate trap because it entices what all of us have been reinforced by our entire lives without ever actually going into the real underlying issue, which is what SJ was saying. Go ahead. Uh... The paradigm shift. Yeah. How, yeah. what needs to happen as opposed to what we want and think needs to happen. Right, right, right. So with this, the different, this is where like the outcome based goals and performance comes into it, right? Outcome goals are objective and they're measurable about, you know, things that you want to see happen. Let's say funding. Okay. So let, let's use the funding as the, as the example, because I know so many people have that when it comes to say, like to be funded, you've got to be a good planner, right? But a good planner, a good trader, you've got to be a fucking planner to be a good business owner you've got to be a good planner a good planner means you like you, you will also lay out a strategy to achieve said goal right and let's just use um, i'll follow the rules of my trading plan and i'll trade that with each trade i take right and i will never take trades outside of my trading plan okay so the trader has an objective goal that he has set he she whoever and now you've got, you know, you've now adopted strategic goals that will allow you to achieve the outcome. Okay. Stay with me. Now, all the trader has to do is trade the plan. Okay. And then you're off to the land of fucking milk and honey. <laughs> Wrong. That's what most people think. They just think, oh yeah, that, that, I'll get that. Okay. But what, what, you know, like most traders, what happens is, the trader is going to get sucked into the heat of the moment during trading and pressure is going to hit and then your trading rules are going to fly out the fucking window, right? Maybe you'll see something posted in Discord. Maybe you're in a trading chat. Someone's doing this. Oh, I'm going to get in on that too. Speaking to many of you on the call for this one. <laughs> Especially okay. if you do that and you win. Yeah. Then the you next time it just becomes that much easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what happens when you do that is then when you then try to apply more willpower and you think other things is going to solve the problem, when you are then back in the heat of the moment, in the heat of performance, you're then going to revert back to self-sabotaging behaviors. Okay. Because all of these external outcome goals are a waste of fucking time. And the reason why they're a waste of time is because of the mind that, that you are bringing into the moment of performance, right? So outcome goals 
outcome goals are really just attempts to control the outcome over trades over time. That's all they are, right? And so what you're trying to do is you're trying to control something, the outcome that cannot be controlled in trading. You're literally trying to control something, your outcome in trading where you cannot control that. You can only control you, right? doesn't matter how right you are in trading, how good you are, you're still going to be wrong time to time. Accept that. Okay, there's simply no certainty, yet you're still setting up outcome goals in an attempt to predict and to control an outcome where only probabilities exist, right? So the missing question here is, who do I need to become so that I can bring in consistent, effective performance into the moment of trading? And the moment is what uh, Mia just said in the chat. You use the word, the question, do you think we seek excitement in the markets? Yes, it's an addiction, just like gambling. That's the problem. It shouldn't. That's what we need to strive to get against. The excitement is the addiction. And we need to yeah. break that stigma because it shouldn't be. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say the ideal goal is to make it robotic as much as we can i mean that's obviously that's never 100 going to happen you want trading for lack of a better term to become boring not exciting because if you allow it to be exciting to keep it in context of that word it also then allows the opposite which is anxiety and fear and you cannot experience one side without the other. And so the goal, is, so to speak, is to minimize the emotions, even though we're human beings, it's not, uh, again, I know what I'm saying, that it's not just a flip of the switch and then we get rid of it, but that's the practice that we need to be working on. It, it, we need to do our best to not be excited when you win a trade, because if you do, again, guys, when you lose, it's destructive. I know it's exciting when we win. It feels great. There's a dopamine injection in the brain and then it wants to get back in and wants to take more trades and this and this and that. And that leads to more catastrophe just as much as losing does. So again, to as a practice to the best of our ability, we want to, again, allow whatever is going to happen to happen because as Jay was just saying we can't control what happens right so by accepting that if we win that's awesome but you can't just hold on to that and be so excited and then build your entire mental perception on just winning 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 because if you do that once the opposite happens and then you lose it destroys all of that you know that entire belief system do you guys see what i'm saying you cannot have one without the other we we are human beings you cannot experience just one side of the coin so again absolutely it is an addiction especially when you win so i again losing sucks but winning can also be bad if it is uh perceived and again just if certain things happen a certain way it can set up for a bit much bigger loss and destruction of the account later it absolutely can and again i argue that that's worse than just losing a trade right now hmm. i think something that's also important like just i just saw nat there and this is something that and i have spoken about many times it's actually because you are you know it's going you can't just it's very hard to become robotic right now possible possible it's not even about that. It's like, even Mia, you said, do we seek excitement on markets because of our nervous system? There's two things here. This is why the somatic body work is very important prior to a trading session, breath work, all those types of things, right? Get your nervous system sorted first because your nervous system will even affect how you handle money. But that's a whole other fucking conversation. But even with the, do we seek excitement? It's actually okay to be excited if you win a trade right? It's okay to be bummed if you lose a trade, 
But what you have to remember is you still have to treat every single trade as an individual trade because this trade, you can be stoked that you won. You're like, fuck yeah, I won. You can be elated about it, right? But you have to just keep in your mind that that trade has absolutely zero fucking, it has nothing to do with the next one. The next one. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's where I'd be, you know, something that, you know, Nat's like, but I am excited because I'm proud of myself that I got it right. And absolutely you should be. You've yes. just got to keep you do not build trade. off of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's where that overconfidence comes in and you just, yeah. you know, yeah. So just keep that in mind, guys. It's normal to feel like you've done a good job and you should celebrate that. Um, but just every trade is its own entity. It's its own self, right? So the question that, or can you see how this is now starting to tie into identity, right? So to bridge the gap between the outcome and the performance goal, the question there, I'll just repeat it so you can write it down, is who do I need to become so that I can bring consistent performance into the moment of trading? Because that is the thing that's going to bridge outcome with performance. Okay, because performance goals are not about the outcome. Performance goals is actually about the mind that you bring into the moment of performance, into the moment of trading. It's about the mind. Okay, so it, it, it basically just means that in trading, the mind that you bring into the moment of performance is the missing edge you're actually seeking to achieve the outcome that you want. Does that make sense? And it's the one thing that keeps eluding you because you don't want to hear that, <laughs> right? So you have to intentionally disrupt and change the comfort zone that you're invested in you know, for self fucking pre pre uh, preservation. This is so relevant no matter what part of, yeah, exactly. It is. Because everyone comes in with the money goal. Every single person comes in with the money goal. And can you understand that if you are not that person, you won't achieve that? So something else, like you all know, I love to study athletes. Right. There was this interview that I was watching. Um, he was an Olympian and <laughs> I don't know what I to call him. He was like a hurdle racer, a hurdler, a hurdler. <laughs> I don't know if that's a thing. Those ones that like jump over those fucking things. Hurdler. Is that what they're called? We're going to roll with that. Yes. I don't know. Hurdler. Cool. But anyway, he won gold, right, at the Olympics. And when they were interviewing him, the question that he was getting asked was, what did it feel like to know you were going to win? You know, what did it feel like knowing you're going to win gold? These were the questions that just kept coming and coming and coming. And this guy had this like, I'll post the interview. He had this like look on his face and he, he replied with, he's like, do you want to know what I was thinking while I was competing? And everyone was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What were you thinking? Everyone wants to know. And he was like, he looked at him, grabbed the fucking microphone and was just like, okay, let me tell you. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's all. That was his response. And then the reporters were like, no, no, no. We want to know what were you thinking when you knew you'd won gold, when you knew you were going to win? And he's like, that's what I was thinking when I was competing. Just one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So basically the one, two, three, four meant something to him. It represented the coordinated activities of behavior, brain, emotions, the performance of the mind, right? That had been cultivated over so many freaking times, so many years of training. So by him focusing on the one, two, three, four, whatever his name is, the athlete was able to then trigger muscle memory at a time when thinking was not important, right? So what this shows is the hurdler's mind wasn't on the outcome, was it? A gold medal athlete in his hurdling race, <laughs> hurdling race, his mind wasn't on winning. 
It wasn't on the gold medal. His mind was in the moment. He was focused on the one thing that he could control, which was the mind that he brought to the performance of execution. One, two, three, four. Didn't even let the outcome come in at all. Exactly. Right. And then he was interviewed after. He talked about all the goals that him and his team had, right? The goals that him and his team had, they were all the outcome goals that gave him purpose and direction for his goal, like his, his growth as an athlete, right? But to achieve these goals, him and, and all the crew, the hurdling team, they then set performance goals. And those goals were all about what mind, right? All of the beliefs that were shaping his perception, he, his goals were around that and what he was going to bring in the moment of performance, in the moment of execution during his performance. Relate this back to performance trading session, right? It is the only outcome he can control. And that because he can, like, that was the only thing he could control. He then also realized that that was his edge in the moment right? Pride, fear, greed, euphoria, overconfidence, I know self-deception, self-doubt had no place in his peak performance mind, right? So the level of performance was the measure of his mind. Does that make sense? Right? So in the same way, your trading account is the measurement, is, is the measure of the mind that you are bringing into the moment of trading. So what I'm getting at is like my, my intention, my hope is that you now have a better understanding of performance goals and how they relate to outcome goals, right? When you, you know, listen or look at your trading account, what does it tell you, right? It's going to reveal to you all the emotions and the beliefs that you then project onto the market when you look at your trading account. In the chat, fucking hell, I've been way off track. I've let my mind get away from where it needs to be. Uh-huh. Yep. So your emotional response to winning and losing is going to actually reveal what your core beliefs are regarding your capacity to manage uncertainty. Think about that, right? This is the, this is the heart of performance. The past is gone, right? The future it's not even here yet. It doesn't even exist. But what is available for you in this moment right here and right now is the moment, right? And this moment that you've got is the pathway to achieving your outcome goals, right? So performance goals are all about the changes you need to make in your emotional responses to your challenges of uncertainty. That's what you can control. Mike? Oops. The word that I want to use for it is the master of repetition, because the 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 binding of the outcome is the pressure that it comes with. The people who win championships and things, all of that is mentally removed, and that all that is happening is the repetition of practice. That's what they're focused one, two, three, four. It's funny that SJ says it that way because that's the same thing with drumming. You guys know what the hardest thing about playing drums in particular is? It's not, it's none of that. It's one, two, three, four, one, yeah. two, three, four. That's the hardest thing about drumming. It is not all of the craziness. That's easy to do. I'm telling you. What is hard is just like, uh, we will rock you, you know, Queen song, boom, 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 bah, and doing that for four and a half minutes straight without falling off the metronome or the, you know, the, 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 the beat and maintaining the rhythm. And it's the same thing, even in trading or what she was talking about with the hurdler or a basketball player or whoever you quarterback for football or whatever it, it, it a championship game should be considered the same way as like practice or scrimmage because that's the true mastery of how that function happens because think about the opposition in terms of a, 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 a sports the other people if they allow oh god guys this is the championship game you know all this pressure 
and all these people are watching, blah, blah, blah. That's, can you imagine the weight that that individual is carrying versus the other individual that is literally just focused on one, two, three, four, and how much better that person can perform. In context of trading, this is what um, I was, um, and I'm glad, SJ, that you clarified, because that robotic thing that I was talking about is the removal of the attached outcome that we desire. When we detach from outcome, that's what I mean when I say that if you win a trade, it is and or lose. It's when we build on those things and build a uh, like a, a pedestal or dig ourselves further deeper in a hole. Because if we lose a trade, we could then think we'll lose the next one. And if that does happen, then we'll think we'll lose the next one. And then on and on and on. Just like SJ said, this trade has nothing to do literally with the very next one, except for what you carry over as literal mental baggage into the next thing that you allow to influence uh, You know what happens. And so the detachment of outcome is the master of repetition, in my opinion, because then all of that, um, again, just if you want to say ego of expectation or fear or not living up to uh, the standard or this or this or that, it creates this mental and I mean, guys, haven't we all, you know, been there in some way, shape or form before? We all know what I'm talking about. But then when you, again, it's almost like you just stop thinking, stop overthinking everything. And then you just, uh, SJ said the right word, muscle memory. Because when you develop the muscle memory, that is so much better because now your body is just responding or brain in, in context of trading, as opposed to overthinking and then thinking about if this happens, then this might happen, or if that happens, then this might happen, or this and this and that, and just on and on and on and on it goes. That's you know toxic when it comes to trading and how we, again, approach things. And so building off of wins and losses is the problem. Celebrate the wins, learn from the losses, but do not carry the weight of it wins or losses into the very next thing because it 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 only will in one way or another cause problems and the master of repetition or uh how uh sj was saying it is what i feel again so it, it literally comes right back to the Bruce Lee quote. One thing 10,000 times. One, two, three, four. One, two. It's just the same thing over and over and over. Learning, guys, I literally almost encourage anybody to just learn, if you have a desire, try to learn to play an instrument and then figure out how boring it is. Learning to play an instrument is like, it is... uh I mean, just it, people think if they're going to play the guitar that they're immediately about to just start soloing and, and doing all of these things. Like, so humbling. You know, we're just gonna, huh? So humbling. Yeah, because you're going to be spending a lot of time just boop, 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 like the simplest things. And then those things just happen. But that's that's my whole point is that that master of repetition. Mm. Mike, I'm going to come back to that because I have a bit to say on that as well, but I just want to clear it, like clean up the process outcome goals just so you guys get a grip on that and you know how to apply the one, two, three, four and the performance to trading as well, right? So let's think about this, right? When we focus on outcome, which is the result of what you're doing, right? You risk losing focus on the actual activity of trading and you get distracted by the end result, right? So when we focus on performance or the process, i.e. trading, right? You then get to keep perfecting that activity. It's the reps, Mike was just talking about it. And then you don't get sidestepped or sideswiped by the results. Okay, so when, when you're setting goals, the first thing 
to consider is whether or not you're in control of that goal, right? So if your goal is to be funded uh, consistently uh, profitable, whatever it is, chances are that you cannot be in complete control of that because you can't influence what the market's going to do, right? So if the outcome is, you know, this is the result or the end of what it is, whatever it is you're working towards, performance goals, these are the, these are the performance levels that you need to be able to achieve in order for you to reach the outcome. And these are things that include like, like, you know, the physical stuff, the technicals, the tacticals, the psychological, the emotional stuff, right? Everything that plays into identity. Okay. And then you've got the process, right? These are the things that you need to actually do in order to achieve the, pro, uh, the performance factors, like who you are in the moment and then the outcome, right? So if the outcome goal is to be, fun, to be funded, then the performance goal is what performance standards will I need to reach to achieve this, right? Process goals, what training, what education, what practical work would I need to do to reach these performance standards? And I want you to think, I'm using the word standards on purpose. Right. If you want an elite, if you want to become an, an, an elite level trader, an elite level just human fucking being, they have standards. They have standards. Right. So trading forex, right? It, it's it's not a regular job, right? Where you're paid for the you know x amount of hours that you spend in front of a freaking trading desk, right? It can feel like charity work at times, but there's and there's no fixed or guaranteed salary waiting for you at the end of the week at the end of the month right because as a trader you're paid based on the results which is from your performance and because of that that is the exact reason why you should only set process and performance goals because you know if you if you do those things the outcome's going to follow suit okay obviously the potential that trading has let that be a motivator that can be a solid motivator, knowing that what you want, you can have, it's there. But the only thing, like it's been done a hundred times for you. So there's no need to doubt that. There's no need to doubt this works. Something Mike says all the time, Forex works, do you? Right, so money goals, they can hundred percent be there for motivation. Okay, but you're not going to get it if you don't put the work in, if you don't do what actually needs to be done. Right? So. Just to like to to talk to Mike's, I'm really glad you brought up like learning an instrument. Does anyone here play a sport outside of trading? And this doesn't have to be a sport. This could be let's use instrument as well. Use anything that's a hobby that's challenging for you, where you're actually learning something. Gym, like let's not let's not do gym because sometimes gym you can just it's so like you're on autopilot most of the time. Surfing, I play football. You look like a football player. <laughs> Surfing, yeah, sick. Okay, running. <laughs> Running's my new thing. I've taken to running. Okay, and I actually took up running because I was always someone who said I'm not a runner and I can't run. You know, big boobs really makes running really fucking hard. <laughs> so I've always been like, I'm not a runner. Okay, and what I've been doing, I was like fucking sports tape right around me, like three bras. I'm like, strap these puppies in. We're going for a run. <laughs> but that was always why I couldn't do it. It was just hurt. It fucking hurts. But I've been diving deep into where I say I'm not something and where I say I can't do something. For me, running, it's fucking hard. And, I, and I'm doing it because it's hard. The last couple of months, it's been boxing right? Cold showers, ice baths. So where I'm going at with this is sometimes we can be very sore losers in trading because we just have this entitlement type mentality, right? Like it's like the, the, the thing we live in right now is this like microwave mentality. If we don't have it right now, then what's next, right? But doing sports and having like active hobbies or playing an instrument is something I believe and I want to encourage you all to do and take practice up. Okay, and apply what you learn in that to your own trading. Okay, because in order to learn trading, 
you have to invest time and energy to become a, a successful trader, right? So what sport teaches me, this is why I love studying athletes, right? I don't study business people, I study athletes, right? Sport teaches me the fundamentals that are necessary for any kind of success that you want to achieve, okay? It helps you understand and control yourself. It helps keep your mind sharp. It helps you leave your comfort zone because you've got to be really bad at it before you get good. And with trading, some people don't want to accept that. Some people can't accept being bad, okay? But when you are learning something new on purpose that's challenging, it's going to make your mind sharper because you're going to leave your comfort zone. And when you do start picking it up, of course, you're going to be rewarded with the feelings of like feeling good, positive mood, whatever else. But what you can apply with that is it's going to give you the patience. It's going to give you the discipline, okay? And I'm sure... Like, I'm sure as shit, you're going to learn, you're going to earn more patience. You're going to have a stronger mind, right? And there's so many things that can come through exercise. Like, I want you to think about, Kerry, tomorrow you're going to go do 5.5 Ks. Not five, 5.5. Push yourself. Trust me, you have so much more in the tank than what you think. Okay, and when you do, whatever, whenever you choose to do something that's hard on purpose, I want you to look for the lesson for that for trading. Okay, because everything that you do in trading is your personal responsibility. You have to make sure that you know how to control your own emotions. And if you can't control your own emotions, if you have bad habits, right, what's that going to do? It's going to give you a weaker mind, right? If you were doom scrolling on social media, not getting enough sun, not drinking enough water, eating shitty fucking food, how do you think that's going to come out on the charts? right? You learn to control your emotions only when you push yourself out of comfort zones. When you listen to that mind chatter and you're telling yourself, I can't, I can't, I can't. And you do the fucking thing anyway. Right? I challenge you to this. Okay. Now I'm going to just answer Mike's question. Then I'm going to throw it to you, Mike. This is really cool. For me, my self-control got to the point where I don't trust myself anymore in the moment. So my partner is going to be my accountability partner. I will need to explain my trades to her, show her my journal and my account, and also only set limits or place trades when she can watch me. This might sound like a weird idea, but it's my way of learning to control myself and do the right thing and treat it like a business. Okay. So I, this is so loaded. Um, this is where, and obviously, I'm, make sure you take my response with the most generous love, okay? You said in here, the first thing that's jumping out to me is, and treat it like a business together. Do you mean you and her treat it like a business or just all of this treat it like a business? Because if you've got your partner watching over you, giving you the okay, that's not a business because essentially you're in charge of your business. The second part for me is my self-control got to the point where I don't trust myself in the moment. So what I love about this is the concept of the mirror, right? And the mirror can be applied. I do this to my clients all the time, right? The mirror can be applied to so many different life pursuits, right? But it's especially critical to understand if you're on the journey to becoming a, a trader, right? So in essence, this concept kind of asserts that your trading results are a direct reflection of who you are at a foundational level, right? So your overall experience with the markets is actually a manifestation of your attitudes, your beliefs, your values, your principles, all that type of stuff. And all of those things, especially the values the beliefs, like thoughts, attitudes, whatever, all those things are going to guide your actions and behaviors. And all of that is going to determine the results, the outcomes. Okay. So example, if you're feeling shitty, you're feeling negatively and you start acting randomly within the markets, then your trading is going to reflect all of those things. Right. So another way of saying that is if your process is poor, if your process is inconsistent, then you can't expect anything other than poor and inconsistent results, right? So one thing that 
we all know to be true, especially if you've been on these calls for a long time, is, you know, we can say this is a trading psychology call, but it's not. It's just a, let's, let's just remove the word psychology. Uh, sorry, remove the word trading. It's just a psychology call, right? Because what do we say all the time? You don't have trading problems, right? You don't have trading problems, right? A lot of people who are struggling with trading tend to think they have trading problems, but they don't actually have trading problems. You've just got personal problems that are showing up in trading. The market is a mirror, right? So you may not have realized that you have had these issues before you actually started trading. So my question is, where else in life do you not trust yourself? I want you to think about that, right? You may not have noticed all of these things before you started trading, but because they're hiding just below your conscious awareness, the market environment is such, and it has this amazing ability to expose you to all of your deep-seated fears, biases, insecurities, defense mechanisms, right? Everything, like put all those things and insert that into money, loss, risk, uncertainty. Okay, so how you handle all of that is, is personal feedback and that's going to determine your level of success and failure. Like, are you, like, will you continuously ignore what the market is trying to show you? Look at that. Will you continuously ignore what the market's trying to tell you? And instead, you're not taking that as feedback. You're not listening to that. So instead, you're going to repeat the same destructive cycles on the chart the same destructive cycles of thoughts emotions behaviors until you fucking you're, you're gonna throw the towel in the market is trying to show you something here right or will you actually put in the time and effort off the charts and replace those negative cycles with constructive constructive ones constructive oh my god i can't say that word what i'm saying is who you are outside the market will drastically impact who you are inside the market, vice versa, right? Like truth is, it's so hard to, to, to excel at trading, right? Because it requires so much of us, all the traits, okay? But when other aspects of your life are in a disarray, right? Where else in your life are you not trusting yourself? Do you not have self-control? I bet you there's other things, right? Inconsistency in your life equates to inconsistency in your trading. Unhealthy personal habits equate to unhealthy habits in trading, right? Your personal habits and trading results, it's all interconnected, right? Even the little things which mo which most people don't take seriously are actually big things like like the basics right if we if you've worked with me in my programs you know the the maslow's hierarchy of needs right on the bottom of that of this fucking pyramid of life <laughs> is the it's the red one <laughs> i forget what it's called but it's basically human needs hydration sex food shelter health right so the things that are little things are actually big fucking things. Staying hydrated, eating right, getting enough sleep, journaling, meditating, exercising, all of those things can have a huge impact in every single area of your life. And they are actually the basics of life, the, found, the fucking foundation, right? Yet they're the keystone habits that seek peak performance. Right. So I want to challenge you to look into other areas of life. Where are you also that? If you can see it in trading, it's going to be somewhere else. And when you can start cleaning up your personal life, I 100% bet your trading is going to improve it. Like I'm a big believer that every single person gets what they want out of the market. Win or lose, everyone gets what they want out of the market some people like to lose so they win by fucking losing money <laughs> right 
hundred percent, like super vulnerable. I really appreciate you putting yourself out. That's why I say, you know, take my response with utmost love because that's what these conversations are for. So before I hand it to you, my the challenge for you all, whatever you're struggling with in trading, see where that else is happening in life. I challenge you to consider what it is you actually want out of the market. And once you have your you know, personal desires identified, I challenge you to then examine whether or not your current habits, routines, thoughts, behaviors, actions, overall processes are in line with achieving them. Okay, because the market offers you all, every single one of us, unlimited opportunity in both directions, up or fucking down. And your identity, which is the collective set of attitudes, beliefs, habits, routines, that is the thing that's going to dictate the direction in which you and your trading account number, your equity, equity curve is going to trend over time. It's either going to be bullish or bearish. You can't hide from yourself as a trader, right? There's, there's absolutely, there's no evading the connection between cause, you know, your, your mindset, your psychology and the effect, which is your results and your experiences of trading. So the market is honestly just a fucking mirror. Mike. Well, the only thing that I really wanted to add on was, first of all, Michael, thank you, because if the questions are not vulnerable, then they're redundant, and it's the same bullshit, essentially. So vulnerability and the desire to do that always speaks towards a much deeper desire of actually not just willing to be vulnerable, but truly searching for answers. So that's not just for you, but it's also for everybody in the sense that, again, if the questions do not hurt, if they are not embarrassing or vulnerable, then are we, are you really doing anything or just hoping that the answer you're looking for is there? That's the first thing. But um, the, the thing that I do want to say about what, um, you, you know, what your initial question was, and then also what you put into the chat a little bit later, uh, it is exactly what we are used to. Your, your significant other, for lack of a better term, is a boss. Because if we, if we can, it, because it's from that framework that I'm presenting my work, so to speak, to a quote unquote higher authority. Not that that person is in control or anything, but as almost like a system of check and, checks and balances. And so, I don't disagree with it at all. And in fact, because there isn't necessarily always ever a right or a wrong way to do to do this. But the, in my opinion, the desire should be to graduate from that at some point because you have to be able to do it yourself. Because that's the difference with trading is that we are the boss and the employee as opposed to, you know, having that. And so I do think that it is healthy and beneficial to first of all, recognize that and to have that accountability partner. This is why I say I don't disagree with what, uh, you know, this plan of action that you were uh, planning to take, because in fact, it could actually be something that is very helpful because then it could also start to develop good habits and, and uh, you know, moving in that particular way, because again, in the heat of the moment, which has been a lot of this conversation, that's a form of checks and balances, checks, you know, uh, to, you know, check that behavior and to, of course, like avoid, you know, mistakes and things that we don't want. So I do agree with it. And uh, it, 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 it could be something that a lot of people could even take away from, because again, that's what we're used to. And so, uh, I, I, I'm also curious if, if you are truly going to commit to that, not necessarily, I guess, like next week, or maybe if it is next week to hear the uh, progress or the results of some of that and how, if it, if it is benefited or 
you know, helped or not helped or whatever, of course, ends up happening. Uh, it's super embarrassing. And the last thing I want to do, but I don't want to keep doing the same thing again. Yes, exactly. Because, and absolutely, that's what, that's what this, you know, plan, so to speak, is uh, obviously that's what the intention is for. And so I would love, uh, again, not probably not just next week, but a uh, little bit down the line to hear some of the progress of that because again it could be a bridge from what it is that we come from and shifting into something new and it could be a helpful bridge for that maybe that doesn't work for every single person of course because again it's not necessarily right or wrong uh it's about what works for each individual so again i i do think that that um is an interesting idea. I've never really heard about it or, or, or I've never really, I guess, considered something like that before, at least in that way. Um, like accountability partner is different as opposed to what you suggested. And so again, I'm curious to hear about it, but yeah, that's all I really wanted to add on to that. I just want to say like, it's actually not embarrassing at all. At all. There's been times when like, I can understand how you may feel that, um, but I also love where you're at because of the whole saying, you know, people do not make change until they feel enough pain and you're fucking done, right? You just said it, it hurts too much. And so if this is what you have to do, then I take my hat off to you. And it's, it's not a, like accountability partners are very powerful, powerful things, extremely powerful things. Um, my, you know, I have them myself. There's been times where Jenna would call me cr like crying because of trading. And I would tell her, I need you to remove MetaTrader 4 off your phone. You know, it happens to the best of us. And so I think the other thing to remember as well is just keep in mind, we're actually not born to be traders. You know, we grow up under our parents' rules. We go to school, we study under teachers' rules. We follow government rules some of us <laughs> not me because I'm a baddie but we work right we earn money under our boss's rules so this is you know we're actually not born to do this so most traders do not acknowledge this until the pain of losses forces them to see what it is you've been avoiding I think this or is a really fun bottom. yeah or rock bottom and rock bottom there's no fucking place to go other than up. So I think where you're at is probably at a really pivotal, pivotal place. It's where you need to be. All of us at some point or another. Yeah. You know, we're, we're not taught the, the, the skills to, to succeed in this industry. We need time to develop them. It's, it's trial. It's sometimes it's two step forward, one step back, you know, if you think of a child, right? A child needs time to, to learn how to walk. It needs time to learn how to talk. A trader needs time to learn, to detach, to practice patience, to be independent. I think you're, you're exactly where you need to be. So I, I fucking love that you brought that in. So thank you. We've said it plenty of times. If it's not vulnerable, if it's not something that is in that, you know, frame of work then it's the same redundant questions like well you know how do, how, how do i become a better trader you know like those questions don't help what helps is those the there has to be a destruction of the old mm. to build for the new always because if it didn't we would already have it this by definition has to happen just like when you go to the gym and pick heavy things up and put them down guys you destroy literally destroy the physical body so we can rebuild the brain is a muscle it is quite literally the same thing but it this is mental destruction of beliefs and things we've come from and all of that to rebuild you have to go through that confusion the pain the the again, just going through hell, so to speak. So again, don't fear or well, don't don't feel as if like you're doing the wrong thing by being in a in that kind of doubt and confusion and anger, frustration phase. 
because it's part of it always. So hats off to you and to everybody else that is, you know, there for that. Guys, that's why we have these calls. Bring that shit. Bring that. Bring that heat. Bring, you know, that's what these are for. And we've always said that. It is not just about the same regurgitated, you know, things. This is about the pain. This is, you know, these calls in particular. We've, me and SJ have always said that. So again, that's you, Michael, taking advantage, the most advantage of the time. Everybody do the same, you know, next time or the time, you know, moving forward. And I think you've just given a permission slip for people to do that which is awesome. Sometimes people don't know what questions to ask. You know, I remember one time I said that to my mentor. This one time, guys, I paid $30,000 to be in this mentor's space for 16 weeks and I didn't ask a question Hmm. because I didn't know, I had to Google what's an expansive question. (laughs) I didn't know what questions to ask, right? And sometimes it's, you'll figure it out, but like it's sometimes a question doesn't have to relate to you. It could be a question about, this is what I'm like, literally your question. I would love your perspective on what I'm doing. I think that's really great. And to change your perspective of loss, it's not enough to think about, you know, to think you want to change, right? You actually need to act differently after you experience loss, after you experience pain. And that's exactly what you're doing, right? If you want different results, you need to do things differently. You need to think about things differently because the same trigger loss can have completely different interpretations by different people. Okay. And and it's like trigger emotional state behavior. Okay, and if you if you work in reverse, you can actually change this perception, right? So start working on behavior after you experience a loss and that's exactly what you're doing, right? So once you execute this new behavior, whatever it is that you're going to start doing, your brain will literally create a different neural connection and if you reinforce it, you'll then create a new belief and that'll give you a fucking chance to rise and to change your perspective about losses, right? Instead of getting like frustrated and whatever else, your perspective will completely fucking shift. You will get what you want. And you're doing literally that. You're literally doing what, like, I'm glad you're doing what you're doing. (laughs) Period. Proud of you. What an excellent session. Agreed. When did you realize in the process that this is possible and you have, and that you could be the person you have XXX money? Do you want to go first or do you want me to go? My answer is simple. When I lost, when I blew an entire account, it put into the framework that I was in control. That was when it really, it wasn't a win. It was in fact, the exact opposite. When I completely built up an account and destroyed it all on one night. It put it, it, it really did put it into that framework that not only is it possible that I'm in control. Simple. That when I, a pain, pain, it sucked and created everything that we're talking about. It, right. when, I, when I lost three months of work in a night, I was, it's, I was pissed, but I was also happy or uh, not happy. I had clarity. I had clarity. It, it put every, it finally put it all into perspective for me. For me, like the question, when did you realize in the process that this is possible? I mean, you joined this company because you knew someone was doing it, right? And maybe the person that brought you in isn't as successful as, um, you know, maybe one of the educators, maybe Mike, maybe me, whoever it is, right? But my mentality has always been, if they can do it, I can do it. 
if they can do it, I can do it. And because I know now, I know now, I didn't know at the time, I suppose, but this is why these conversations are also very important to be a part of, because even if something isn't relatable to where you're at right now, right? When you do experience that, you're also going to have the wisdom for that moment because you've been here on these calls learning. So when you do experience it, you're like, oh, you know what? I actually remember that time Mike and SJ were talking about this. That's why these calls are important. But I guess for me, it's if they can do it, I can do it. I say that all the fucking time. But as you all know, trading is a different skill like any other. It requires a belief system shift. And what this whole call has been about is, is about trading is nothing more than a performance skill. The goal of any performer, any athlete, any musician, any trader is to, to take what starts out as painful, as time consuming, as, it requ- as something that requires lots of effort and make it automatic and effortless. That's the goal. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? So this is when you actually, this is going to sound really fucking gay, but you become like one with the skill. (laughs) I am Yoda with trading. (laughs) Like this is when the, the performer, the athlete, the trader becomes one with the skill and you no longer need to think about what it is you're doing on the charts. It's so automated. That's where my robot stuff. Yep. Yeah. And it, it's not actually enough to repeatedly practice a skill. You need to, there's so many different ways you can practice things, you know, and it, it comes down to the four laws of expertise for any performance. You've got practicing, which is quantity, the reps, right? You've got mindful and focused practice, which is the quality, right? You've got practicing in different ways and you've got practicing in different conditions, right? Like, The repetitions make perfect. I also never want you having the the, the language of I'm I'm going to be a master trader. I'm trying to master trading. Because when you when you think about that, and this is something my mentor reflected back to me, and it was like, I want to be a master trader. And it's like, why would you want to do that? Because when you're a master, you're no longer a student. It's not about being a master at this. Stop trying to be the master. When you're that, you, you, you'll start fucking learning. Everyone's eyes just in is like, ooh. <laughs> the only way to go from there is down. Yeah, you know it all. And how scary is that when you get to that moment? If you ever hire a mentor, guys, ask who their mentor is. And if they say they don't have one, you fucking run. <laughs> Charge back. Yeah. Um, what's your cancellation policy? <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Just keep saying. Like, just before we go, my mental, my mental game when I'm trading is when I enter, and this is what we spoke to last week. When you enter a trade, this is to accept loss. It's to accept the win. When you enter a trade, I want you to picture the worst case scenario in front of you. Worst case is that it's going to go in the opposite direction. Actually, no, the worst case would be price goes in the opposite direction and you move your stop loss. Because if it hits your stop loss, that's fine. But that would be probably the worst thing if you move your stop loss, right? And then price keeps going against your trade and then you move your stop loss. Like who's fucking done that? (laughs) lion if you have it um and your ego grows with your emotion right it's a shitty scenario so what i'm what i'm saying is the way you manage your emotions is the biggest barrier to your success so what i do is i literally think about the worst absolute worst case scenario i think about the best and then i get in the trade i'm no longer affected it's like If you are upset by losses, and obviously I'm not talking about the constant string and string and string and string of losses, because that means something needs to change. But if it's just like losses and you get bummed about it, then that means you actually truly haven't accepted the loss. And once again, that's a you problem. 
last week's recording talks all about that is the true acceptance most people think they've accepted because you just say yeah i've accepted it (laughs) but your emotions tell you otherwise if you react in any other way when i lose i literally say to the market i'm like cool someone was a better trader than me in this moment in this moment And that's okay. It's so okay. We had um Joe, uh, one of our traders, he's not on tonight, but he, in our group chat, he sent this message and I'll just read it. He goes, anger, angry emoji, <laughs> got stopped out last night, but at least it was a good trade. Wasn't expecting a break of structure on the lower time frame, So my stop loss was below the close of the previous low. And then... Nathan, his mate was like, yeah, man, that sucks. But at least, you know, you're picking the good trades. And he's like, yeah, man, that's what I love about trading. There's always another chance to get a trade. So fucking good. There's always another chance. Like he was annoyed, natural human emotion. But he did not let that affect the next one. He's like, yeah, sweet. I'm actually like, cool. I got stopped out. The analysis was right. That means I now I can now go see where I can refine. He found where he went wrong. Next time he's not going to make that same mistake. His mindset is now. That's just what I love about trading. It's just going to be a next good one. <laughs> I was like, you're a fucking weapon. So good. All right, guys, we're on nine thirty one. Mike, thank you so much. Oh, not just me. Everyone, thank all of you guys for being here. We don't have to, but we are, and that's always what I'm thankful for, guys. Seriously, for real. Facts. Same time next week. Bring your friends. (laughs) And your dogs, bring your cats. (laughs) Bring your dogs, bring your cats. (laughs) (laughs) I love you guys so much. Have a wonderful night. Same time next week. Yep. Ciao. Thank you, guys. Love y'all.